Secondly, secondly, um, the gentleman here who said, who said one or two people, the gentleman here said, why are you threatened by one or two people? I'm not threatened by one or two people. Nobody is threatened by one or two people. The figures I gave you showed we're not talking about one or two people. The figure I gave you at the very beginning was that people who identify as white British uh, citizens are now a minority in their capital city. So we're not talking about one or two people. And it is Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking out a video which uh, Douglas Murray is one of the speaker titled Douglas Murray shuts up UK 18 immigrant activist on colonization. Wow. I believe this is going to be a very uh, eternal debate. So let's start with the video. Go. Uh, hello, my name is George Fotopoulos. Uh, I would like to make a point to Mr. Murray. Uh, the last point you made in favor of the motion was that uh, the people of Europe have the right to protect their identity and that their politicians should respect that right. Uh, and I would like to ask you why you feel that the presence of one or two or a thousand people with a different identity within a society threatens the identity of the people who were in the society originally. Whether you believe that is a legitimate concern or a primal fear, and whether you agree that when a primal fear drives a crowd, they become a mob, and that a politician should follow a mob and not provide leadership by calming the mob down and giving them a reason. That's my question. Thank you. And uh, towards the back. Um, hello. My name is Eli Liu. I was a student in the uh, University of Piraeus International European Studies. And um, I won't be very quick, but um, I am against the motion. And I would like to say that the European Union was the next colonial power. So most of the countries of the third world was, were exploited from us. So now we cannot say that we don't accept them because most of their riches and their wealth were taken from us. And um, as for what Mr. Voridis said uh, about our values as Europeans, it's the... Um, Globalization that um, takes just, our... Just repeat that sentence, will you, please? You stopped in the middle. Yes, our values. Mr. Voridis talked about our values as European citizens, as humans. Well, I think globalization takes them from us and not immigrants. And um, about the shadow economy, it's the fault of the state control that doesn't um, eliminate it. And right, okay, that, that'll do for the moment. Let's first of all uh, get those points picked up. Uh, Douglas Murray, your response particularly to that uh, challenge to you. Right, very quickly, first of all, if I were Hassan in Syria, I would hope among other things that I would help to rebuild my country after the Assad dynasty had wrecked it so completely. I'd hope that I would stay and help to rebuild the country after the devastation caused by that family. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, um, the gentleman here who said, who said one or two people, the gentleman here said, why are you threatened by one or two people? I'm not threatened by one or two people. Nobody is threatened by one or two people. The figures I gave you showed we're not talking about one or two people. The figure I gave you at the very beginning was that people who identify as white British uh, citizens are now a minority in their capital city. So we're not talking about one or two people, and it is very disingenuous to pretend that I was. Thirdly, the lady at the back, you say colonialism. I'd like to return the question to you. I don't deny the crimes of colonialism, not for a moment. I'd like to ask you a question. How long do former colonial countries have to be punished for then? How long do we have to have our identity erased for? Is there any end limit to it in your eyes, or is it only at the point of complete negation? And finally, why is it that it's only European former colonialist countries? The largest, one of the largest and most significant and longest uh, colonial powers in history was the Turkish Empire. Do we do this to Turkey? 
Do we say to Turkey, you must have your identity erased as well as punishment for the past? Almost every single people in the world at some point has done something historically they could be punished for. But why, I wonder, is it that it is Europeans that we are always being heard, Douglas being Murray. offered that choice? Douglas Murray's response to the Muslim woman's comments about colonialism and the wealth of Europe offers a poignant critique of the narrative of Western guilt that is prevalent in contemporary discussions about immigration and historical justice. He challenges the idea that Europe must perpetually atone for its colonial past, pointing out that history is not one-dimensional and that many other nations have histories of conquest and colonization, but are not held to the same standards of restitution and guilt. This argument draws attention to a perceived imbalance in how historical accountability is applied, suggesting a politicized narrative that selectively targets Western nations. It is important to note that the concept of historical guilt and reparations is complex and fraught with inconsistencies. For instance, historian and author Victor Davis Hanson argues that while the West engaged in colonialism, it also led the movements for abolition of slavery and colonial independence. Hanson notes that Western civilization, despite its flaws, has made significant contributions to the moral and technological progress of humanity. Furthermore, the focus on Western guilt often ignores the contributions made by immigrants to their host countries. According to a report by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OKCD immigrants contribute significantly to the economies of their host countries through entrepreneurship, filling vital job vacancies, and cultural enrichment. However, the narrative that frames immigrants solely as victims of historical injustices can overshadow these positive contributions, potentially fostering resentment rather than integration. Statistics from the European Union indicate that while many EU countries have taken steps to address historical injustices through various forms of reparations or symbolic gestures, these efforts have not always led to improved relations between native populations and immigrant communities. The European Commission's reports on integration stress that successful integration policies should focus on mutual respect and understanding rather than perpetuating narratives of guilt and victimhood. Other commentators, such as French philosopher Pascal Bruckner, have critiqued the tyranny of guilt in Europe, arguing that it hampers the continent's ability to confidently engage with the rest of the world on equal terms. Bruckner suggests that an excessive focus on historical grievances can prevent societies from moving forward and addressing contemporary challenges pragmatically. Douglas Murray's critique of the Western guilt narrative highlights a need for a more balanced and less accusatory approach in discussing historical issues. While it is crucial to acknowledge and learn from the past, it is equally important to recognize the complexities of history and the shared human propensity for both virtue and vice. By shifting the dialogue towards mutual respect and cooperation, societies can better manage the challenges of immigration and integration, fostering environments where all members can contribute positively and feel valued. Oh, what an interesting question and I really love uh, the way Douglas Murray addressed the question uh, from the first guy who asked that, uh, why is Douglas Murray threatened by one or two uh, immigrants, one or two immigrants coming into the uh, United Kingdom? And from the answer Douglas Murray gave that it's not threatened. It's not threatened by immigrants and it's not talking about uh, one or two immigrants coming into uh the United Kingdom that if is one or two immigrants that uh it won't be uh it won't be uh it won't be lamenting it won't be complaining but it's not talking about one or two immigrants it's talking about uh thousand five thousand ten thousand hundred thousand twenty thousand because a lot of immigrants right now are are, are seen uh British as in Europe as in U uh, UK as uh, as a place to to seek uh, greener pastures. So that as a result of that, a uh, large number of immigrants uh, uh, monthly, yearly, uh, find their way to, 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 to UK, find their way to Europe. And that's, that's what uh, Douglas Murray uh, is actually uh, uh, commenting about uh, in, this, in this video. In this video, um, he made a point that even uh, in the capital, that the the citizens, the citizen, the, the, the citizen, those that are actually uh, the original citizen of UK, that they are not minors in their they are not minor in their own country, and you can imagine that you know uh, people coming from other country uh, to uh, immigrants coming from their own country to UK, 
uh, you can tell they help to uh, uh, enrich, enrich, uh, enrich uh, the culture and you know enrich the culture and the tradition of of UK. But uh, according to Douglas Murray, they have done more harm as compared to uh, as compared to as compared to the contribution they are they are making in the country. And uh, you know, I believe if you are coming into a country that you know uh, it's not your country. And you are coming to reside in the country. Uh, is and you are coming to reside in the country. The best thing you can do is, uh, to uh, is for you to respect uh, the country culture, for you to respect the country, uh, uh, uh respect the country, uh, tradition, and you try to adjust your own culture, adjust your own tradition, so you can fit into the into the country culture. You can fit into the country tradition. But in the situation whereby, whereby you come into the country, which is not originally your country, and you start uh, imposing imposing your culture on the uh, imposing your culture on the on the country, imposing your tradition on the country, and you 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 claim you have freedom of speech, you have freedom to do whatever you want to do. I think that is totally that is totally on 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 unaccepted. As the same go. If uh you come to Rome, uh you do what they do in Rome. You don't have to come to a country uh with your own uh imported culture, your own imported tradition, and try to impose impose your culture, impose your tradition on the country. Because I believe uh you coming into a country, uh you should be able to uh adjust yourself to the country culture. You should be able to uh, adjust yourself to the country tradition. If you know you can't uh, adjust yourself to the country culture, adjust yourself to the country tradition, then it's better you stay in your own country. Because if you are in your own country, no one is going to question your culture. No one is going to question your tradition. Just like uh, in Muslim country, uh, they have uh, certain norms. They have certain tradition. They have certain culture that... You come into the country, you must abide by that culture, you must abide by that tradition. So I believe even UK as a country, even British, they have their own uh, British culture, they have their own British tradition. So you come into their own country, you have to respect their culture, you have to respect their tradition, and you have to be able to integrate your own culture in their own culture in a way that it will fit into their own culture. You don't have to come and... Uh, impose your culture on the country because uh it's not your country because before you come into the country they have their own uh they have their own tradition they have their own culture i believe uh this is what uh douglas murray uh is trying to is trying to address address in this video and for the second lady that talks about uh the fact that uh uh the british uh uh they colonize africa they colonized Africa during the uh, the time uh, during the era of slave trade in the 1960s. I I totally agree with that. The British uh, were colonized uh, 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 were, were colonized by uh, uh, the British colonized Africans, and the lady said that's the reason why uh, uh, Africans are coming uh, are, 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 are coming into the into the into the UK are coming into the UK because their wealth their wealth have been taken by the by the British, and I think she's intellectually honest to some point, to some extent. I can't say she's totally correct. I can't say she's totally honest. That's why I'm saying she's intellectually honest to some to some extent. I agree with a point that uh the uh the British they they play uh, they play the part during the uh, during the time of slave slave trade. They colonized Africa, and we all. We are aware of that. We are aware of that. But how long are we going to are we going to start blaming uh start blaming uh the British start blaming them for coloni uh, for the colonization, and the, uh, the uh, this colonization she's actually talking about it happens way back in uh in the I think in the nineteen sixties uh nineteen eighties nineteen seventeen that is that is really long that is really long I believe uh each country. Each country uh, has the uh, duty duty of uh, you know developing their country and you know 
providing a good environment where the citizen can thrive. I believe uh, that 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 is how it's supposed to be. You don't have to uh, 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 you don't have to uh, blame uh, the British for 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 the problem Africa is passing through. We, uh, we uh, 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 for the problem Africa is passing through because we we it it is a, it, it is a fact that uh, Africa were colonized by the British, and I believe uh, 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 it's not it's that happened long 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 ago. How long are we going to are we going to keep blaming uh, uh blaming the the whites for our problem? I think it's high time uh the blacks it's high time the blacks start being accountable to address their own problem. So I've really learned a lot uh listening to uh Douglas Murray's point of view uh in answering the question in answering the question and I totally relate with him. You coming into someone's country and you know imposing your own culture, imposing your own tradition on the on the country, I think that's not something uh, that that that's totally unacceptable. I believe British as a country, they have their own identity, and British identity is embodied in their culture, is embodied in their tradition. That's what makes them who they are. So if you want to come into the country or you want to come into British, you have to. Uh, you know, you have to adjust your own tradition, adjust your own culture, so you will be able to integrate, and you have to be able to respect uh, the British culture, respect the British tradition. You don't have to come and start imposing your own culture, imposing your own tradition on the people, and at the end, uh, and you call it that, and you and you call it, uh, you have your own freedom of speech, you have your own uh, freedom of, uh, you have your own rights. I believe. You have your own right. You have your own uh, freedom, but you don't need to come and impose it. You don't need to come and impose it on 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 on. Uh, uh, you don't need to come and impose it on the people. You don't need to come and impose it on the people. If you know you cannot integrate with, uh, with British culture, you cannot inter integrate with their own culture. You cannot uh, accept their own culture. I think it's better. You go back to your own country where you can, you know, live the way you want to live, and no one is going to question you for your action because that is your tradition, that is your own culture. You can go back to your own country and, you know, try to live the way you want to live. But if you are coming into someone else's country, you have to adjust yourself. You have to accept the people culture. You have to accept the people tradition. You don't need to impose your culture or your tradition on the people. Because you are the one coming into their own country. So you have to respect their tradition. Their tradition, their culture, that is their identity. British culture is embodied by their tradition, is embodied by their culture. Wow. I've really learned a lot listening to uh, Douglas in this video. So keep the comments coming. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.